Now today's video for you is how to paint a bird's eye in watercolour and how to achieve more of a life within the eye at the same time. So I think it's about time we got the bushes wet, don't you? Let's get started. Now the first colours I need to mix is phthalo blue and cerulean blue. And I want to make this more to a water consistency. And these are for those tiny highlights within the eye. Now as for the black, I want these to be really creamy. And that's because when we look into the eye, it's quite deep, isn't it? Like a deep, dark colour. If I use black on its own, it can be quite, um, can be quite a flat looking colour, really. So very often if I use lamp black, then I'll add a colour to it as well to kind of enrich it a little bit more. Just to either warm it up or cool it down, depending on the colour I use, be it a red or obviously a blue. And that will vary from obviously subject to subject. Is it a cool or warm painting? So today what I'm doing, I'm trying to make my own black by using these two individual colours. So Viridian Green and Elizabeth Crimson. So we've got to think about the three primary colours, haven't we? So red, yellow and blue. Now we've already got the red, that's the Elizabeth Crimson. And green, obviously, is going to be blue and yellow, as you know. So that's going to be Viridian Green. So that's our three primary colours mixed together to make a dark colour. And this is quite a rich colour as well. I don't really want it on the green side. I want it just a touch into the red side of the mix. Okay, so add a little bit more of the lizard and crimson than the green. And always make up more than you think you'll need. Using a size double zero brush, I'm going to just very lightly load that brush, so just the tip of the brush. So what you can do, you can load that brush up, roll it as you pull it away from the mixing palette, and give it a tap or two on some kitchen roll before you go to that painting. So start first of all by working on the inside of the eye, and you're going to gradually fill it up. But... Go over those pencil marks, try to look at where that highlight is. I know this is a really tiny eye, isn't it? Very, very tiny. But the idea is try and work out where things are placed, so map it out inside that eye. Can you imagine doing this eye ten times bigger? Okay, so you zoom into that reference photograph, and you can really look at all the individual marks and reflections within the eye. More so with an animal like a dog or cat or even a horse. Yeah, I know. But in this case for the bird, we know it's not just like a, a black orb, okay? We've got to think about the reflections, we've got to think about the shape of the eye while we're painting it. So gradually and lightly, I'm going over those pencil marks around the eye. Then I'll slowly fill them in bit by bit as I go along. We need to make sure that you keep looking at that reference photograph. It's something that I go on about quite a lot with my videos. I really do. And that's because my eyes are going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So that reference photograph every few seconds while I'm painting this. And my photograph is on a tablet, literally only about a foot in front of me, believe it or not, just off camera. And by doing that, I tend to remember a little bit more what I'm trying to paint. I know, I've got a very short-term memory, okay? Don't tell anybody. Then working around the eye, for the eye ring, which I always call it, Add those little marks in between. Think about the clock face. So consider the center of the eye being the center of the clock. And these are the hands going around from the eye, okay? And just pop those in all the way around. You'll notice actually when you go to the upper left, if you wish, so probably about one o'clock, <laughs> talking about clocks, 11 o'clock on the clock face, you find them little marks just disappear there, don't they? So it kind of tapers out. So the outer ring sort of curls in towards the edge of the eye. And that's for both the top and the underside as well. Do this very gently, very lightly, with a barely loaded brush. Sometimes what I do actually, when the brush is ready for reloading, I don't reload it. I try and paint those very fine marks first of all, before I recharge my brush. And they can very lightly fine tune the eye to the way you want it to be. Now, watercolour white. There's lots of different watercolour whites on the market. You can use white gouache as well if you want to, but use a very small amount of this to add the highlights into the eye. You may need to go back and forth with this as well, because once that white paint dries, then what you can do, just touch it, or only touch it, with a little bit of colour over the top, a little bit of phthalo blue or cerulean blue, anything like that. Just add a little bit of a blue hint towards the highlights, but not all the way over it though. Now, once that white is dried, you can add another layer of white over the top and really make it shine. 
Again, I'm trying to consider the shape of this eye at the same time. Really thinking about how round the eye is. Soften the highlight around the edges as well to really fine tune in this eye now. And this is the stage I really enjoy the most because when you start to fine tune things like this, you know that you hardly need any paint at all on that brush. In fact, sometimes I'm using just a very lightly dampened brush. That's it, not soaking wet, just to soften and blur things together a little bit. Then you can put another highlight in there, which will be phthalo blue. Now, if you want to see more videos on how to paint eyes, take a look at the link to the top right. I'll see you there.